These two stories will leave you questioning every step the next time you go for a walk outside in the dark. I was told these stories by the people in them and am now passing them on to you. I'll let you know now, in both these stories, everyone survives, but as you will see, that outcome was not guaranteed. As you listen, if you have any ideas on what the creature could be, let me know in the comments. Any information will be helpful. And at the end of this video, I'll share one of my personal experiences that to this day, I can't fully explain. Let's get into our first story. The night began like any other. Travis, his girlfriend Jessica, and his younger sister Tina decided to head down to a spot near the river near his college campus. Travis and Jessica visited the spot often, but with Tina in town, they thought they'd make it special. Set up a fire by the water, enjoy the stars, and unwind together. The beach was a short walk, about 15 minutes down a wooded trail. The path was fairly easy to follow, though it was covered with leaves. It was still visible in the dim light. When they arrived, they settled in, lit a fire, and relaxed for over an hour, just talking and taking in the stillness. But by the time they decided to head back, the woods were pitch black, and the trail had all but vanished under a thick layer of leaves. Part of the trail involved crossing a clearing under power lines, about halfway between the beach and the road. Tall grass and thorny bushes made the trail a necessity. After a few minutes, they realized they had lost the path. With the flashlights on their phone and the music playing softly on Tina's, they were confident they could find the path again. They decided to head toward the clearing, hoping to find the trail from there. And sure enough, they did find it, and began walking along it, waiting to pick up the trail. Jessica had fallen a few feet behind, when suddenly, Travis heard a sharp crack from deeper within the trees. It sounded like a branch snapping, loud enough to pierce through the soft background music. Travis told Tina to turn off the music and began scanning the tree with his flashlight. Focusing in the direction of the sound, nothing seemed wrong at first, just a thick silence. When Jessica asked what was going on, Travis brushed it off, saying it was probably nothing. But something did feel wrong. He kept his flashlight steady, scanning the trees again. That's when he saw it, a shape standing still in the darkness. It was something white with what looked like twigs protruding up from the top of its head. It stood motionless about 20 feet away. He didn't see the telltale reflection of eyes like it was an animal, a deer perhaps, he'd hoped. Thinking it might be a trick of the light, he moved his flashlight away, trying to find the trail again. But when he looked back, the shape was now moving, swaying back and forth in a way that was unsettling and natural. What the? Travis whispered, feeling his heart race. His sister looked over and screamed, her voice cutting through the silence. Why is it moving like that? He'd never seen her so scared. Not waiting to see what would happen next, he shouted for Jessica and Tina to run. They tore through the tall grass and bushes, not daring to look back. Tina stumbled, losing both her shoes in the scramble. Travis helped her up, telling her to leave them behind as he ran. Eventually, they found the trail again, and they didn't stop running until he burst out onto the street under the dim glow of the overhead lights. Only then, feeling the safety of the light, did they slow down, gasping for air as relief washed over them. They tried to make sense of what they'd seen. Travis explained how the shape had swayed back and forth like something limp and unnatural, moving in a way that defied reason. But Jessica and Tina added something even stranger. After Travis had turned to find the way out, they said it had begun charging at them. It moved upright, like a person, but it was swaying as it ran, a gait unlike any human motion they'd seen. Fast, too fast for anything that should exist. The more they pieced it together, the stranger it felt. Then, Jessica remembered to tell them something she hadn't mentioned before. When they first arrived at the beach, she'd felt like someone was watching them. She'd even thought she'd heard footsteps in the woods while they were starting the fire. Nothing about the creature's movement, its lack of features, or the eerie sense of being watched made sense to any of them. Fortunately for the trio, they were able to move on with their lives, but the memory is still a haunting one. If you have any idea of what Travis and the girls encountered that night in the dark, they're eager for answers, and so am I. Now, as for me, I've heard a few stories about mysterious creatures lurking in the woods, skinwalkers, wendigos, 
but honestly, the Mothman comes to mind. This creature is often sighted in wooded areas, appearing from nowhere, and has a history of terrifying small groups of people with its strange movements, combined with the unnatural sway and protrusions from its head. That's my vote. What do you think? This next story is from John, and recounts a horrifying experience from his childhood. Let's get into it. It was the middle of summer back in 2019. The days were long, but even the lingering heat couldn't hold back the chill of the night. The darkness brought cool air that felt bitter after such warm days. John, 13 years old at the time, was the oldest of his three friends, Mike, Anthony, and Andrew. That evening, they had plans to watch a movie at his grandmother's house. But first, John had to walk his dog. He was an older dog, and John enjoyed walking him through the wooded trails. The fresh scents and winding trails seemed to bring out the youthfulness in his aging furry friend. The path to the forest was a short one. It started just 30 feet from his apartment building. It led into a small but dense wooded area, a place John had ventured many times. But tonight, as the last light was fading, things were different. The sun had already set, and darkness was closing in fast. John had always had a complicated relationship with the dark. It had always given him a strange uneasiness. He wasn't thrilled about going so late, but he couldn't leave his companion without his walk. He asked his friends to join him for the routine trek through the trees. They agreed, though Anthony and Andrew took a moment to change clothes, just long enough of a delay for the darkness to settle in completely. The warm summer day rapidly cooling into night brought with it a dense fog, swirling around them and casting eerie shadows on the trail. At first, they felt fine. A group of four boys and a dog, old as he was, still gave them courage. They had their flashlights as well, casting beams of light out in front of them illuminating the trail, occasionally scanning the thick underbrush with youthful curiosity. A few minutes into their trek, they heard something. A sound they hadn't heard before, and have never heard since. It was something like a howling wail, a mix between the desperate cry of a man and the guttural roar of an animal, layered with a distant, otherworldly noise. It was the kind of sound that registered in your ears, but seemed to reverberate through your chest, chilling you from the inside, making the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. John and his friends froze for a moment. A shiver collectively ran through them. They collected themselves and tried to laugh it off, convincing themselves it was nothing. A prank, some older boys, some unknown harmless animal, something other than the terrifying images forming in their imaginations. They heard rumors of other kids running scared from this area, people fighting out at school and mocking them, and they weren't about to let that happen to them. They continued on, feigning bravery. Now, forward on the trail was the fastest way out, but with each step they became aware of another sound, a familiar sound, but somehow, even more concerning than the scream they heard before. Footsteps, soft, deliberate, moving in the brush somewhere off the trail. A light crackle of leaves being crushed and the occasional twig being snapped. If they stopped, the footsteps would stop as well, slightly out of sync. But when they moved, they could hear it again. Something or someone was trailing them, mirroring their movement but remaining out of sight. Andrew tried to lighten the mood by joking about it being a bear, but no one laughed. The flashlights trembled in their hands as they pushed on, trying to ignore the mounting dread. They knew something was following them, but they didn't know its motives. They had heard animals will sometimes follow sounds if for no other reason than curiosity. At this point, they had circled the trail and were on the last stretch before they emerged from the woods and be back out in the clearing behind John's apartment building. But just as they could feel the relief of being free from the confines of the trees, a loud crack shattered the stillness, a tree snapping, its branches splintering. All four of them whipped their lights toward the sound, cutting through the foggy darkness, straining their eyes in anticipation, hoping to see a deer or a raccoon or nothing at all. To their horror, there it was. A figure stood before them, tall and black. It appeared to absorb the light from their flashlights. It was though it was made of darkness instead of flesh and blood. The creature was lean and muscular. A gnarled fur seemed to cover its body. Its fur was colorless, featureless, but for two wide red eyes staring back at them with a cold predatory intelligence. In its hand, it held what must have been half of a broken tree as though it were nothing more than a twig. John would later say he'd never forget those eyes, those cold, wild eyes that seemed to pierce right through him. 
Then, in one smooth motion, it hurled the tree in their direction. Instinct took over, and before the tree hit the ground, the boys scattered, running for their lives. John and Mike sprinted down the path in the direction of John's building, while Anthony and Andrew veered off into the dense forest in a panic. John knew his dog was too old to keep up, so he scooped him into his arms, his heart pounding in his chest as he ran. His ears tuned only to the crunch of leaves and what he imagined was the creature's pursuit. His, in his mind, he could feel its hand reaching out for him, the same hand that effortlessly could snap a tree in half. Finally, they burst from the woods, back into the light of his apartment building. For a moment, they just stood there, catching their breath. The comforting glow of the lights feeling like salvation itself. They didn't speak, didn't need to each one processing the terror they had just experienced. They made their way quickly through the clearing to John's apartment, forgetting about the movie they'd planned to watch. Later, they tried to piece together what they had just experienced. John described the creature's terrifying body, the way it moved, the hunger in its eyes. The others listened and gave their own slightly different details, each haunted by the experience that none of them would ever be able to quite shake. Since that night, the darkness has cemented itself in John's mind as a place of lurking, hidden things waiting just beyond the edge of sight. He never returned to that forest after dark, rarely during the day. Even now, he says, every time he closes his eyes, he can feel that creature's predatory glare. I've heard lots of strange noises in the woods at night, but I've never seen a creature described like that. A few cryptids come to mind, but the Michigan Dogman sticks out to me. It is said to have piercing amber eyes and a howl that sounds like a man's scream. What do you think? Do you have any ideas? Like John, I suppose we'll never know for sure, and in this case, I'm alright not finding out for myself. Oh yeah, I said I'd share my personal story at the end of this video. But first, if you've made it this far, I hope you're enjoying my storytelling. If you have suggestions, critiques, or just want to compliment my hair, let me know in the comments. Here's my camping story. When I was a flight instructor working in southern Utah, I would take off work every Monday and go out fishing from Sunday afternoon until Monday evening. I'd spend the night upstream in the mountains, cook my fish, and spend the night camping alone. It was one of my favorite simple ways to get some distance from the hectic world of helicopters and students for just a little while. One particular trip, I had ventured pretty far up a tiny spring-fed creek deep into the wooded mountains. It was full of small brown trout and I'd caught and released quite a few. I kept the largest one out for dinner. After relaxing for a while, sitting by my fire and eating, I drifted off to sleep in my little bug net tent. It had a small roof, but was open on all sides except for the bug net screen. It was cozy, totally exposed. At that time, the only thing I was worried about was rattlesnakes or scorpions, and it was sufficient to keep them out. I remember waking up to a loud thud. I felt it through the ground as well as heard it. Then all of a sudden, an explosion of thuds all around me in a circle as fast as it started. Silence. I laid on my back, staring straight up. The fire had long gone out, and it was dark below the tree cover. I couldn't think what to do. It was much too far to try and leave. It was too dark to gather wood to get a fire going again. So I just lay there. I think I may have drifted off to sleep again, but I'm not entirely sure. When the sun came up and I got out to look around, I couldn't find any trace that something had been out there smashing the ground. I was sure I'd see bear prints or something, but there was nothing. However, I had cleared all the leaves and small brush before lighting a fire, so it was hard to tell if the marks there were mine or from something else. To this day, I don't know what was out there or if I dreamed it all without knowing I was asleep. At least, that's what I tell myself now. And that's my story for tonight, and we'll wrap it up there. Make sure to check out this video if you want to hear more and subscribe to be the first to catch the next one thanks for joining me for another midnight group